All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another one of our conversations here with Dan. And Jed. Yeah, hey everybody, glad to have you with us. Thank you for everyone who's been watching and talking. We've had quite a few comments coming in that we've had fun responding to, so we just always want to start with a reminder that if you ever have comments or follow-ups, especially emailing us directly is a great way to start a conversation, but definitely leave comments below the videos. It's always appreciated. For this conversation, actually our next two, um, we'll tell you about that here a little bit more, uh, but we would really encourage hearing your stories, hearing your comments, how you have handled these sort of situations. And like I said, we're gonna have it in two parts, but depending on the conversations and follow-ups we get, we might have a third one based on some of your uh, follow-up comments. And this is a practical matter that, that concerns a lot of you out there, and that's why we think you'll be interested. Yeah. Tell them what we're going to do, Brother Jed. All right, so here we go. We're going to have two episodes. So for the next two uh, conversations with Dan, we're going to start with talking about when do I leave my congregation? When do I leave my church? Uh, and what might be some reasons behind that? What? Do you, how do you handle it? Those sort of things. And then the second part will be, then what do I look for in a new congregation? So whether that's you've left one and you're needing to find another one or you're a seeker who's just getting started. What do you look for in a congregation? Yeah, is this like musical chairs, Brother Jed, where you everybody gets up and then we just walk around and we sit down and we get up again and we walk around and sit down? I, I would hope <coughs> not. Yeah. I, I think the hope that we're going to have is to encourage you to find a place where you can stay a while and grow and be spiritually fed. Is mm -hmm. that a fair statement? Yep. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely, I guess that's a good thing. We're not advocating everybody get up and mix and leave a church willy-nilly sort of thing. No, we're, this is a thoughtful process. And but we know that you do that from time to time. Yeah. And we want us all to check ourselves for our reasons mm. for doing both of those things. Yeah, and there have been some people who have done the long, hard thoughts about leaving, and it was a tough situation. And so we'll hear from people that they're like, they feel really bad about it. <clears throat> but they have some really good reasons for why they did it. Sure. So maybe this will help on both sides of that conversation. All so, right. So first of all, I'd like to take us to the idea of, you know, are we supposed to be part of a congregation? Okay. And I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, one of the main reasons is uh, biblically a an ecclesia, a church, mm is a group of people that gathers together on a regular basis. Um, the New Testament is written, a lot of it is, to various ecclesiae, groups, gatherings, assemblies. Yeah. And <clears throat> those ecclesiae, those assemblies, had leaders that were spiritually responsible for the souls of the people in them. Mm -hmm. And the apostolic plan seems to have clearly been that each... Christian should be part of a body that regularly assembles together and should be looked after, if possible, by spiritual leaders that are also attached to that body. Okay. So, because a lot of times people, <clears throat> they'll read like those body passages that we could go to and they'll go, well, that just means the church in general. So where would you point them if we're really wanting to get down to the well, local congregation? Um, First Corinthians is a great uh place um, okay. and of course first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 talks about divisions that were occurring in the congregation at corinth mm. and uh, then throughout the rest of the book the apostle paul is talking about how to have unity inside that ecclesia he talks about spiritual discipline in that one congregation in chapter mm -hmm. 5 uh, in chapter 11 through 14 he talks about the assembly in that one congregation and how right. they should respond also in chapter 14 and chapter 11 he talks about that group of people regularly coming together and in 1423 he even mentions when when they all come together in one place mm -hmm. so the book is about one group of people who regularly assemble and who have issues that they need to take care of and how they take care of those. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Acts 14, 23, Paul and Barnabas, after the Galatian mission, 
appointed elders in every ecclesia, in every assembly. Mm. Those are groups that regularly assembled together. Okay. So basically, without really spending our time on that point, yeah. the New Testament teaches that each Christian should be for spiritual encouragement and spiritual accountability be attached to a, an ecclesia, a group that regularly meets together. Yeah. So, I mean, the easy one mm -hmm. to address is someone's getting ready to move towns. They're going to naturally have to sure, move that, the congregation they're part of. Yeah, they've got a new job in a new place or something. Yeah. We're, so, we're really not even discussing no, that. No. So we will on how to look for one when you... Yeah. But it's like, <clears throat> it's not a, oh my goodness, we need to get permission from people to move from congregation to congregation and all these other things. It's a good thing to be identified with a congregation, but there's right. nothing like you've committed to that one body for life sort right. of idea. Right. Well, okay. for example, when Saul of Tarsus was converted in Damascus of Syria and he began his preaching career there in Damascus, preaching in synagogues and so forth, and he was forced to be lowered over the wall in a basket and leave Damascus yeah. and he went to Jerusalem. If you would look up Acts 9, verse 26 through uh, 29 and read that for us, this is okay. when Saul of Tarsus tried to join himself with a new group of Christians. Okay. <clears throat> 26 to 29 of Acts 9. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he <clears throat> attempted to join the disciples. And they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. All right. So there we have an example of someone who, who when he went to a new place, was compelled by something to join himself to the disciples, which mm -hmm. is a good example for all of us that when we go to some place, we need to join the disciples. Now, here we have a guy that that kind of testified for him and said, you know, I know this guy and this yeah. is what happened. And, you know, he's a Christian and he's been preaching and teaching and yada, yada. And they respected that. So we can talk about when we get to the to the next topic about um, coming together with a new church. But Let's let's pursue the idea here a little bit of why would I leave a congregation? Yeah. That's going to be the focus of the rest of this discussion. Right. We've kind of established that being <coughs> part of a congregation is important, and you want to be committed to that body, but there comes a point when maybe it's time to leave. Yeah. And how do you know? How do you know? Yeah. Um, in Revelation uh, chapter 2. Okay. Uh we have in the book of Revelation the letters of Christ to the different churches that were uh, the seven churches of Asia. And right. in Revelation chapter 2, start with verse uh, 2, and let's read down through verse 5, please. Okay. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found themselves to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. All right, here's a group of people that evidently were doctrinally correct mm. because they believed and taught and stood for right. the right doctrines. Right. But they had stopped doing the works that the church is supposed to do. Okay. They had abandoned the outward uh, moving forward of the mission of Christ yeah. in some way. Yeah, they've and, gotten rid of false teachers, but they have lost the love. Yeah, and, and he says in verse 5, to clarify that, remember whence you have fallen and repent and do the first works. He's talking about what they actually do. Yeah. Okay, and he says if you don't, <clears throat> then I'm not going to stay with you anymore. I'll mm. remove your lampstand. The presence of the Holy Spirit will no longer be with you. Yeah. So if scary so, thought. So we don't want to spend our time 
with a church from whom God has gone away. Mm. And um, that is, is, in this case, a church that wasn't doing anything positive to mm. move forward the work of Christ. So if if there's been encouragement in that direction and we try and there's just church is just not doing anything and you want to be part of a church that is doing something then that might be a legitimate biblical mm. reason for thinking about going to another church okay so it's not so what you're saying is it's not just doctrine not just doctrine i was going to say that but i always go oh man How's he, how, what's going to be the response there? But but let, let's go to another side of that. I was going to say, but there is the flip side of can it be all works, no substance Not sort at of all, thing. not at all. Let's go to Acts 20 for a minute. Okay. And it's interesting that both of these passages are about the church at Ephesus. Hmm. Both of them. Which so, makes it easy to compare. It does make it easy to compare. But if you go to Acts chapter 20, mm -hmm. we're all familiar with verse 28 because it's about the, the overseers. But let's read about 28 through 30 or 31, somewhere there. Okay, <clears throat> starting in verse 28 of Acts 20. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. All right, so in this case, the warning is that after Paul, who was their teacher, you know, mm -hmm. left... Um, there would be wolves that would enter among the sheep. And he says, from among your own selves. There he mentions mm. that from among church leaders, yeah. men would arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Mm. So if you happen to be in a church where the leaders of that church begin speaking things and teaching things and promoting things that you know are against the teachings of the New Testament, yeah. Then um, certainly there would come a time when if 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 they persisted in that, that you would need to say, well, I may need to be a part of a different church because I don't want myself, my family, mm. the friends that I would bring to this church hearing things that I know are not in concert with God's word. So you might need to step away from that group of people. Yeah, and it almost feels like this congregation <clears throat> was doing pretty well, but he was warning them about this, and they became so overzealous about that warning that it caused them to lose out on the other actions. So you could always have a church that recognizes its failings, but then kind of swings too far one direction or another. Sure, and, and in fairness to these two passages, the Acts passages early on in the history of the church at Ephesus. Right. And the Revelation passage is several decades later. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the first century, yeah. the church of Ephesus. So uh, so they did a good job of keeping the wolves out. Um, yeah, at, uh, they did yeah. evidently, but they yeah. lost sight of what the vision was. There we go. So we can't just, as a congregation, be doctrinally correct if we don't also practically do the things that Christ has told us to do mm. in reaching out to other people in helping those in need and especially in preaching and teaching the gospel to people that need to hear that in in strengthening the souls of the disciples you know all those things are things that need to be done yeah uh, one questioner recently wrote in and asked a question about what if we find ourselves in a church where there are things that are questionable going on or mm -hmm. things that we mm -hmm. don't necessarily agree with? Are each of us held responsible for what the rest of the church does? Right. Can I be the good Christian in a body that's going bad, <clears throat> you and, know, sort of thing? Yeah, and, and again, we're talking about there's probably a time when we have to make a decision that we might need to leave yeah. or stay. And that's where I was going to say, eventually you get to that, what is that tipping point? Yeah. Even recognizing these as kind of the two things. Let's go ahead and uh, go to um, Revelation chapter okay. 3. 
back to the seven churches stuff? Yep, back to the seven churches since we've got a variety of churches there. Mm -hmm. And Christ is walking among those lampstands. He's walking among the churches. So he's looking over his churches mm -hmm. as to whether they have become unfaithful to him and they've just turned away from him or they're they're kind of in a in an initial struggle and they need to do better or what the deal is. Look at right. 3, 3 through 5. I think this is to the church at Sardis. Yeah, starting in verse 3. Remember them what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I come against you. Yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed th thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. All right, so in that case, he, he states clearly that while there were major problems in that congregation, there were a few people there who mm. had not defiled their garments and those would be the ones that would walk with him in white so which should give some hope to some of you out there yeah it, yeah. it doesn't mean that 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 god judges as congregations he judges individuals but he will he will not stay and work with a congregation who is turning away from him but individuals in that congregation might mm -hmm. be making good decisions and trying to do what's right and this was the case yeah. In the church at Sardis. So um, so I guess if you're in one of those tough situations and you're the person sitting in the pew and going, either my church is too one way or the other, I feel like there's a part of this whole church congregation thing missing. And maybe they've talked about it. Maybe they haven't. Maybe it's just sitting on their heart for the first time and they're re recognizing it. There shouldn't be the immediate "I got to get out of here" or "I'm in judgment." Sort yeah, of thing. I think I think the first thing you do if you really notice that something is wrong, it's it's clearly, blatantly, doctrinally wrong, or there's some action going on that's wrong in the biblical sense. Mm -hmm. Then you go to leadership of some form, and you tell them that. You see this and and what's the deal with this and if there's if there's no explanation or no inclination to solve that problem then you have to really seriously think about do i belong here and maybe make some decisions to yeah go elsewhere now here's where it gets difficult okay um there have been people who have who have made a decision like that and questions like this have arisen okay <clears throat> If, if this is wrong with the church I'm in and I need to leave this church, then what are my options? And some people just look around the town at other congregations, mm. denominations even, and they say, okay, would it be better for me to go to denomination B where they're also doctrinally wrong on several things, but they're practically doing good things, yeah. or stay in this place where... Um, it's wrong for A, B, C, D. And my answer to people I've talked to there has been this. If we don't find a congregation to join with that meets the standard of the New Testament, mm -hmm. we can't forget the fact that we are the church. Mm. It's not just about joining ourselves to a church, but we are the church. Okay. So there are times when, when it would be better to begin a congregation and go forth with the uh, mission of Christ and try to faithfully teach and lead others, hmm. it would be better to do that than to join yourself with a group that was biblically wrong and out of whack and so forth. Okay. So I'm just going to clarify this. <laughs> so you're saying if I know, like if I'm looking at you know, an ABC system, you know, in my church and point B is just wrong, crumbled. I've tried to fix it. It's not working. Mm -hmm. And I look around and all the churches, they also have B wrong and, or maybe, or maybe B wrong. is right and C is wrong or whatever. But in, in either case, there's not one that's really fitting what I see a church should be. You're advocating that maybe it's time to start anew and try to make them all be better? I think that sometimes that's true. Um, that that 
the option we have is to begin a new one. One of the reasons I say this is I grew up in the mission field a long time ago and a good portion of my life was two or three families meeting together mm. where there wasn't anybody else that were New Testament Christians. Yeah. And from time to time we would drive long distances to where there were other congregations and have fellowship with them. But where we lived within, you know, dis striking distance, there yeah. was nobody. And so Mm. We had to we had to be the church. Yeah. And I think many Christians miss the fact that the church is not necessarily a them, it's an us. So so what I'm hearing you say is we're supposed to be the church, and sometimes that may mean we can't find the perfect church or a better church, and that may lead us to starting a new one. Yes, especially, you know, there are many areas where the population is such that there may just be one church, mm. uh, New Testament church in your town. And so you have to do something different. Um, in our case, you know, we live in an area where there are a number of different congregations. Right. And, and uh, there's there's really no excuse for not being part of a congregation. It may not be perfect and have everything we want, but if it's biblically right and it's trying to do the work of the Lord, yeah, then we can find a place there. So probably should. Okay. So maybe finding a way to work through in a congregation, if there's possibilities, is a first option to attempt. Yep. But especially if you're in one of those lesser populated areas or different things, it's not a bad thing to consider starting a congregation because we are the church. That's exactly right. Okay. Anytime we're talking about people leaving their congregations, there's generally going to be a conversation that comes up of, Okay, do you just throw your hands up and leave? No, you, you address what's wrong before you leave. Yeah, I was going to say, or do you work through it? And sometimes people, who their pushback on working through it is they go, well, I don't want to be judged for still being here sort of thing. Yeah, but you can go to the people and, and express your concerns and be fair and open with them. And then if those concerns are not addressed and you feel like there's violation of biblical teaching, whether practically or doctrinally, mm. then you have to make that decision yeah. and go. But at least you've done what you needed to do before you left. Right. And and I think this is giving that clarification of don't feel like your soul is in judgment while you're trying to work through things. Exactly. With that kind of, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, so a lot of what we focused on so far has been those clear the biblical teaching type stuff. Right. But there's a lot of the discussion, it comes down to something personal. Yeah, or, personality conflict yeah, or, or whatever. Or those practical <clears throat> things. So I guess let's look at that personality conflict aspect. What if you just don't get along with the people there? Yeah, if if you have a, as we talked uh, one time, the, the Barnabas and Saul conflict over John Mark. Mm. John Mark left them in the lurch on a mission journey. Yeah, and Saul didn't want to take him anymore, and didn't want to have him there anymore. He was not happy. <laughs> yeah, and so he and Barnabas disagreed, and they couldn't come to an agreement. And so they both went their separate ways, both of them doing good work for the Lord, both of them still yeah. in fellowship with one another. But we'd just rather not work together. Yeah, and eventually that worked out so that so that John Mark became a an effective worker in the kingdom, and Saul later called Paul even acknowledge that in second timothy chapter four mm. and so <clears throat> um you know it's okay sometimes when people choose to work different places just because their personalities clash but we need to be careful if that's the case that we don't cause unnecessary division over that mm. and we just go about our yeah. separate ways and do our thing and not cause unnecessarily division over there because it did i mean that conflict did cause some division i mean you had barnabas and paul that well, it was a division that they chose to do, but they chose to acknowledge one another mm. as good workers in the kingdom, even though they yeah. had the division. Like we don't have we don't have record of Paul writing to the churches Barnabas went to and goes, "Nah, you don't need no. that guy." You know, <laughs> he just said, "I just didn't get along with John Mark." Yeah, yeah, he may have said that you know John Mark might be a fine young man, but I can't be stuck out in the middle of nowhere with somebody I I can't depend on, and so mm. you know, yeah. And then, like you said, eventually there's some reconciliation there. Yes. So, uh, yeah, if you're someone out there that you're having that personality disagreement, 
obviously we would say there's a lot of things in the Bible and we've done some conversations about how to resolve sure, those Sure, if there's really a sin and you go to that person, you can't yeah. resolve it, et cetera. But if it's just that your personalities just don't mix and, you know, there may be that either you need to find a separate place in that congregation where you can work quietly or that may be that you need to try to go somewhere else. But yeah, because sometimes it rises above just the one person to another and it almost becomes you versus the culture of that congregation. Possibly. Sometimes set about by the leadership, sometimes just by the nature of the place and the, you know, the history or whatever. Yeah. And maybe that's another one of those going back to our gifts based ministry type discussion we had last week. Yeah, but be careful that you don't because of a personality conflict, it's not a biblical issue. Be careful that you don't cause division and destroy a congregation mm. because First Corinthians three seventeen. If anyone destroys God's temple, him will God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, and that's what you all are. Talking about the collective, the yeah. group of the body. So, if there's an issue and you need to back off, don't try to destroy the church before you leave. That's wrong. Yeah. Any way you slice it. And we're talking. And again, <clears throat> just make sure that people know we're kind of talking about those personal things, those practical things. This is different than if you have your congregation doing doctrinally wrong things or they're right. not living out Christ. Right. That's one discussion. This is more just, hey, I don't get along. Or I don't right. clash. I don't feel I'm being used. You know, all these different things. Sure. And so I guess that just to kind of finish that thought out, if it is you and the elders aren't getting along, is that a reason to possibly leave a congregation? It could be if if it's something that we can't get around, if we can work effectively another place and we don't hurt the congregation, we're leaving. Uh, <clears throat> but again, we should leave, in that case, peaceably. We should leave without destroying the congregation. We should leave and go to another congregation and try to work peaceably. Uh, if those things are all in place, then okay. Yeah, because again, hopefully it's... You always have to give this caveat because people will in inevitably cut into it. But you would have tried to work through these things. Right, right. And, yeah. and one of the big top doctrines of the New Testament is that we should work for unity and yeah. and not cause division if, if at all possible, unless it's one of these major, major issues. Yeah. There can be a time when you lose confidence in your leadership's ability to handle something, or maybe you feel like they're not standing up but that almost goes back to the more doctrinal type things depends on, depends on what it is but yes yeah it can okay and i i think this is a good place to pause and just remind everybody if you have your own stories your own questions related to these type of things by all means send them in it does help us when we're having these sort of conversations to have more than just our own experiences in mind right um because there's not always a book, chapter, verse for all of these situations we're right. going to encounter. <clears throat> um, we can take the examples we have, the principles we have, and try to apply them as best as possible. That's what we have to do. But obviously, if you say, well, A happened, and then B was the result, was there a scripture, or is there a scripture to help me? You know, Not always. Right. Sometimes rarely <clears throat> on a lot of these sort of things. Um, okay practical thing that a lot of people struggle with when they come to this question of leaving churches is their kids. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, this was something my family moved congregations sort of thing, but is desiring something for your children a good reason to leave a congregation? I don't know that there's one answer for that. Um, Ephesians 6, 4, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6 gives parents the the fundamental responsibility for teaching their children yes. so <clears throat> parents should not shirk their responsibility for teaching their own children and just say well we're going to move because we need somebody else to teach our children yeah even though i do understand that uh, having people that can encourage your children spiritually and wanting them to be able to grow spiritually is a is a really good um idea and it's a good thing to have in your mind um so i think that some people leave when they maybe shouldn't leave maybe they should teach their children and be a teacher for other children 
Uh, on the other hand, there's not a one size fits all for that. So mm. um, there's no biblical answer to that except parents need to be teaching your own children. I'm glad you're the one saying that, not just me as yeah. children's minister sort of thing. But so desiring something for your children in and of itself is not wrong. No. Unless it's, well, I don't really want to mess with teaching my kids. I just need to find a place that'll do it for and, me. And we find people in churches that have active education and youth ministries, and they're doing everything. And even in those formats, children are going astray because their own parents are not teaching yeah. them. And so... Let's don't use that as an excuse for yeah. congregation hopping if we don't need to go. But wanting a peer group for your kids... Is not a wrong thing. Not a wrong no. thing. It's probably a really good thing because you're probably already develop, developing them and you see that as the missing piece. And if you do that, then, then leave peacefully and go to another place and cooperate and still take the responsibility for teaching your own children. Yeah, because again, just a personal... I'm not seeking like oh, I want to make sure that my family made the right choice sort of thing. But that was that was kind of what we did is it had been a thriving congregation, was shrinking, and then it's eventually me and my sisters, you know, younger sisters, and they said, you yep. know, we really want a place where y'all can grow and have a peer group. Mm -hmm. And that was a tough decision, you know, mm -hmm. and we did a lot of tears shed over that sort of thing. Yeah. But it worked out well. So if you're out there and making that choice, again, go through all these different things, Check your heart, check your reasoning, uh, but desiring things for your children's spiritual growth is not inherently bad. No. <laughs> <clears throat> and think about this. Basically, biblically, I need to be a part of a congregation. I need um, the spiritual accountability. I need the encouragement of brothers and sisters in Christ. I need to be an encourager of brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm. Um, I need to be part of a congregation that is trying to teach what, the apostles taught, and we also need to be part of a congregation that is trying to do the will of God according to the mission of Christ. Yeah. We need to not be causers of division in God's church uh, unless it is over a strictly biblical matter that won't be solved. Mm. See, and, and having all those things, even then the Bible doesn't answer every question all of you have out there, but at least that gives you a template to measure your decisions by yeah okay there's probably a lot of other nuts and bolts questions sure there is so again there send are. those in <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of them uh send those in help us have this conversation more fully uh because like i said as they come in we're still looking at the possibility of a third episode that addresses a lot of those questions that come in along the way um should we leave a congregation because the walls aren't the right color? I wouldn't do it if I were you. It's, it's so sad that that's another part of this that we're probably not going to address right now. No, we're not. That's that's not really. But there are lots of stories out there sure. of people who it's not even a personality thing. It's just a disagreement about little stuff, yep. really. So it is a tough choice to make. It's a lot of... Uh, thought and prayer that should go into those decisions, but hopefully this provides a little bit of the spiritual background for why or why you wouldn't make that choice. Yeah, and then next time maybe we'll talk about if I'm looking for a church and I'm I'm in a fluid situation, what should I look for? And yeah, we'll talk about that the same way we've talked about this. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. God bless. Thought him, thought him, thought him, thought him.